In this video, we will discuss the innate immune system. This is the, there's the innate and the adaptive immune system. And the immune system can be classic, can be categorized into the innate and the adaptive. And in the previous video, I said that we have to kind of do this so we can talk about it. But usually, but they are occurring, the, these processes are occurring simultaneously. And in this video, we will talk about just the innate immune system. So here's a little picture. And the, the innate immune system, if you get a path, pathogen or you get an infection, some microbe gives you an infection, some little bug gets inside, from zero to about 12 hours, 13 hours or whatever, the innate immunity is trying to to destroy it. It's the first responder, uh, and it has it has a way of detecting microbes um, or pathogens other than you know that are outside of you, because each one of your cells need to be maintained, right? And so these this uh, innate immunity has a way of protecting yourself against microbes. And then after about a, you know, a day or, you know, 15 hours or so, then you start moving into the adaptive immunity or the adaptive immune system. And we'll talk about the parts of that. But before we go on any further, I just want to remind us of hematopoiesis. We've talked about this in previous videos. But hematopoiesis is the blood cell tree, if you will, the genealogy of blood cells and how they become about. And I think you've seen this video or this picture in a previous video. But just to remind us, we have white blood cells. These are the blood cells inside our, pla inside our blood. And these cells are floating around and they respond to, they are part of the immune system and they respond to infections and microbes. And here's a little acronym, never let monkeys eat bananas, um, N-L-M-E-B. That will kind of help you remember what, white, what are the white blood cells. Never let monkeys eat bananas. So you have neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. So let's look at where they come from. So you have a stem cell here, and through growth factors and under certain circumstances, you know, the circumstances and the, the growth factors will stimulate the stem cell to either become this cell or this cell. If it becomes the common myeloid progenitor, then that this cell gives rise to the megakaryocytes, which then uh, give rise to the thrombocytes, they give rise to erythrocytes, mast cells, and myoblasts. Okay, then myoblasts differentiate into basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, and monocytes. And then the monocytes, once they diapodes out of the blood system, they become the macrophages. Macrophages and neutrophils are part of main are mainly part of the phagocyte cells of the innate immunity. Also, this natural killer cell here is also a player in the innate immunity. So this common lymphoid progenitor gives rise to this natural killer cell and to small lymphocytes. And then the small lymphocytes give rise to the T lymphocytes and the B lymphocytes, and the B lymphocytes give rise to the plasma cells. And these are of the uh, adaptive immunity. So, but we'll get to there. So we're going to talk about the natural killer cell, neutrophils, and macrophages. The innate immunity, there's you know four main parts, if you will, that we'll talk about of the innate immunity. The first one is the epithelial barriers. And we have skin, we have gastrointestinal tract, and the respiratory tract. These are some of the epithelial barriers that are kind of protect us from microbes because microbes are you know they're smaller you can't see them in the microscope that's by definition what a microbe is and they are in our food they're in the air they're in the water they're everywhere and so the epithelial barriers protect us from the majority the vast majority of these microbes so what are some of the types of epithelial layers we have simple squamous which is just you know, a bunch of cell types, or a bunch of cells kind of in this pattern. You have simple cuboidal, simple columnar, stratified squamous, 
which is the skin, like our skin, stratifi stratified cuboidal, pseudostratified columnar, and transitional. If you're taking histology, you'll have to memorize all these and the types of tissues that, or the types of tissues that where these epithelium types are made out of. But just for our intent and purposes, innate immunity first first part of that is these epithelial barriers, the skin, the gastrointestinal tract, and the respiratory tract. Inside the gastrointestinal tract, our stomach and our small intestine, large intestine, they are all part of this gastrointestinal tract along with the esophagus, and that helps perform, that is a barrier from microbes entering into our bodies. The same with the respiratory tract. When we breathe in air, there are microbes inside and these respiratory, this respiratory tract helps prevent those microbes from entering into our bodies. Okay, so let's skip on to phagocytes. This is number two, phagocytes. Three is complement and four is NK cells. That stands for natural killer cells. And we're going to talk about those. Now we're going to talk about the phagocytes. So let's just say that the phagocyte has entered our, or a, a microbe has entered our body and is causing a problem. What happens? So first, you have leukocyte recruitment via inflammation. We talked about that in our previous videos. If you haven't watched those videos, scroll down on my channel page and watch the inflammation leukocyte recruitment video and the before and after, a couple of videos before and after, and you'll get all that information. Part B, what happens next, is the phagocytes recognize microbes by membrane, membrane proteins. So these microbes, they have membrane, membrane proteins on them. And there are certain flags, if you will, you know, a certain flag that sticks up outside of the microbe, and these phagocytes have the ability to recognize these flags and they're, they are not self, they're not part of us, so they have different flags, and these phagocytes recognize those, and they will continue to, they'll try to attack them. What are some of those flags? Well, number one of them is mannose residues. They have sugar residues on them. N-formal methionine containing peptides, that's another flag. And then they have toll-like receptors, that's another flag. So here's three types of flags that microbes have, and then the phagocytes will recognize those three flags, and then they'll ingest them. That will trigger the phagocytes to invest in, so if I have a cell here, if I have a phagocyte cell, and then I have over here a bacteria or a microbe of some kind, there'll be a flag, there'll be flags on this microbe, and the phagocyte cell will be like, oh, hey, you're not part of me. I'm going to eat you. And he'll create a big, you know, a big mouth, if you will. And he'll go over and he'll ingest them and he'll suck the bacteria inside the cell. And then activation. So what happens next is that the, the phagocyte cell is activate, activates transcription factors, notably NFKB, which stands for nuclear factor KB. And what nuclear factor KB does is it stimulates the productions of cytokines and proteins. Cytokines, we'll talk about what cytokines are in a moment, but the cytokines are messengers. They're like the be, you know, the messenger between the messages between cells, how they kind of communicate, and it will also uh, produce the cell will be simulated, the DNA will be read, and then the cell will start making proteins. And then what happens next is the phagocytes internalize microbes into vesicles and then they get destroyed by reactive oxygen species, ROS, and you can watch previous videos on reactive oxygen species. And in the inflammation videos, we kind of talked about that, how uh, these little vesicles are secrete, you know, this bacteria is ingested into this phagocyte and then there's lysosomes. Um, you know, strong chemicals that will chew up this bacteria and destroy it. So that's phagocytes. That's the phagocyte part of the innate immunity. Now we'll talk about complement. If you remember from the video 27, 
chemicals of inflammation, plasma protein, the complement system, C3, C3A, C5, C5A. We kind of talked about we talked about this picture and everything, but I just want to review it here because this is a big part of the um, innate immunity. Um, go watch this video if you haven't, and that will explain in more in depth what the complement system is. So we have the lectin pathway here, and we have the alternative pathway here. These two pathways within the complement system are part of the innate immunity. This one right here, the classical pathway, is the adaptive immunity, and we'll get to that. So in the lectin pathway, remember how I said that in the phagocyte section of this video that there's mannose sugars that are flags? Well, on microbes, this is a microbe, and this microbe has a mannose sugar sticking off of it. So what happens is that this lectin inside the blood attaches to that mannose sugar, which then causes this cascade to happen. You know, the, you can watch this video and it explains more about how uh, how this happens. But the C3B flag is then stabbed into this microbe or inserted, and then the C3B once that flag is there. It can lead to phagocytosis, which we just talked about, but more importantly is a formation of the membrane attack complex, or the MAC. And the MAC, I think, think it's complement number nine. Um, there's complements, complement one through C9, but the complement protein number nine inserts a hole inside this microbe, and so its content can leak out and all of our, you know, all the stuff inside of us can leak inside. And so that will disrupt the membrane and the sodium and the other types of things that are inside the microbe and the microbe will lice. It will blow up, if you will. So that's the way the lectin pathway works under the complement system. The alternative pathway, you can watch more videos on the altern alternative pathway, but it, it's just that the alternative pathway, there's a microbe, it's detected, then the same thing, the C3B flag is inserted into the microbe, and then the microbe can follow one of these paths for destruction. So that's the complement, that's the complement pathways, the lectin pathway and the alternative pathway. And then last but not least is the, is the natural killer cells. These natural killer cells are the fourth part. Let me scroll back up here. Are the fourth part right here, are the fourth part of the innate immunity. And I'm going to make a special video on the natural killer cells because I want to talk about more in depth how they destroy uh, microbes and pathogens. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.